Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we're going to do a software tutorial. We're going to take a look at the software of choice that I use in Six Sigma. We're going to look at SPC Excel. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to the latest tutorial on Sigma Zone SPC Excel. Uh, and today what we're going to take a look at, we're actually going to just take a look at um, the multivariate chart. Now actually the multivariate charts I'm going to do using standard Excel functionality in this case rather than using SPC Excel. But what you will see me use, you'll see me use a suite of diagrams. I have some continuous data coming from a molding process uh, and then I'm going to show you how I analyze it with all the diagrams at my disposal. In total, I'm going to use four different diagrams. So in the yellow field, so let's start off in the yellow fields. I've been given 75 data points from a process. This is just in run order. So these are just random data points. Um, we've taken a sample of 75 out of the process. We're going to take a look at what's happening. So the first thing I'm going to do, highlight the data set. I'm going to go run chart. This would be my traditional approach run chart so here's the graph now then what I'm looking for here I'm looking for any trends is my process a random number generator is it stable across the page in this case it is stable across the page look if you if you kind of cast your eye through the middle it's not moving up and down to any great extent it's just randomly bouncing around so in theory it's a random number generator now although it's randomly bouncing around I am a little bit concerned of the wild swing. So it's kind of going from high to low quite a lot here. So it's going from a high point to a low point to a high point to a low point. Um, so it's swinging wildly as opposed to coming up with these data points in the middle, etc. So data points like this where there's data in the middle as well as at the extremes. So although that looks like a random number generator, there is something that looks a little bit weird in the data, but it's not really showing up on the run chart. So there's the there's chart number one, the run chart. Okay, I'm going to delete that off just for simplicity. Then I'm going to go sigma zone. Now I'm going to go histogram. Let's draw a histogram. Now if this is truly a random number generator, I would expect the normal distribution to appear. Okay, here's my histogram. Okay, now then, woof, that looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? Um, that's that's a that's a bad sign. That's a sign this process has a problem. Um, so this is histogram. Uh, these are grommets. Uh, so these are rubber grommets, um, and it's the outer, the outer diameter that we're interested in. So here we go. So giving it a good specific title. Now this is why you use the different diagrams. The run chart didn't show us this clearly, although it was swinging around high to low. So there was a sense that something wasn't quite right. But here we go, look, we, we've got these two groups. Um, the, typically they'd say this is bimodal. It's like there's two, there's two separate processes going on here. So clearly something is not, clearly something is not right with this process. This isn't what we'd expect from a random number generator. We'd expect it to generate that purple shape there, the normal distribution. So the next diagram I'm going to go to is back, go back to the data. I'm now going to go for the CPK diagram. Now at the top here, I have the specification. So I have the spec for this thing. So I can go back to Sigma Zone, Analysis Diagrams, CPK. Would you like to do the CPK from the data set? Yes, please. Okay. Just look as if my data set's been highlighted. Let me just highlight the data set to make sure I've got it. Up comes the um, up comes the wizard. So it was twenty three point four at the top. Twenty three point three at the bottom.
and there is the calculator. So what we're seeing, look, is we've got this shape and the whole thing is shifted down. So it's sitting off center. It's sitting right towards the bottom specification as well. Although to be fair, although we've got a defect rate, a predicted defect rate, look, of 72,000 defects in a million, in other words, 7.2%. That's, that's the predicted estimate of what's going to happen when I run this process. I can't necessarily trust that value. It's not a good estimate because my histogram is not normal. It's saying that I've got data down here when clearly that's, that's not quite the case. So whilst this is giving me a sense that the process is off center, that's probably the most important piece of information, I guess, as much as anything. I can't, I can't rely on the estimate of the defect rate, um, but I need to dig deeper into this process. I want to see some other patterns. So I've got a run chart, histogram, CPK, what have I got that's wrong? I don't have a normal distribution and I'm sitting off center. Let's dig deeper. So going back to the data, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create what's known as a multi vary chart. And what a multi vary chart does is cut the data up to show what other variables could be going to do into the data. So rather than plotting the data in run order, we're going to arrange the data in a very specific pattern. Now that data has been collected for me and it's in the orange fields over here. So this process has 25 cavities and you can see in the data set, I've got three data points. I've got three data points from each cavity. So we've, we've molded a sample. I've taken three from cavity one all the way down to cavity 25. And what I'm now going to do, I'm going to arrange that data in the maximum value that I saw from the sample of three, the minimum value I saw from the three, and the average of the three. So we're going to go maximum, minimum, average. So let's go to the, the sum function and ask for the maximum value. Make sure I ha only highlight the three data points. Enter. Go back to it. The minimum value. Highlight the three data points. Enter. And finally, the average. Now, by the way, if you don't see max, min, and average on your menu here, go to more functions and you'll find it. So finally, average. I'm in the wrong I'm in the wrong cell by the look of it just excuse me a second and go to the average cell over here average and I've got to highlight those three data points hit enter so I've got max min average I'm going to highlight those three go to the corner grab the box and then I'm going to drag and drop that formula all the way down. So I now have the data as max, min, and average. And now I'm going to draw a very specific diagram using these this data. I'm going to draw a stock graph. So I'm going to go insert. The stock graph doesn't appear as a normal chart, uh, as one of the normal uh, chart selections but if I go to the corner there click I'll get some additional choices um, of which the stock if I go all charts the stock graph is halfway down the list look click on that and the chart I'm going to use is known as the high the low and the close graph so this would normally be for plotting your stock market performance etc uh, and it's obviously going to plot the maximum the minimum and the close value so that's what we're going to use but we've gone maximum minimum and average instead of close and click ok and there's there's the diagram 
Now, just as a reminder, 23.3 is the bottom tolerance. Okay, now each each little line, got maximum, minimum, and then there's a little there's a little belly. Let me just blow this up a little bit. Oops. So you can see the little the little tag in the middle. That's the um, you got the maximum at the top of the line. You got the minimum at the bottom of the line, and the little belly was the average that we saw. And each line is a is a cavity from the tool. So I've got twenty five cavities. I've got twenty five lines on this on this graph. So if I just pull this up a little bit so you can see it better. 23.3 this value over here this is bottom tolerance so if you look at this thing cavity 1 cavity 6 cavity 9 cavity 16 17 and 22 are all sitting on bottom tolerance those are the ones we need to get modified remember the whole thing is sitting low as well um, this is all the bottom half of the of the tolerance here that most of this data is sitting in. So we want to modify those six cavities. There's some cavities next to them. Look, so this is, uh, let's have a look, cavity 4, cavity 5, cavity 10, and cavity 12 is also not great. So if we took those cavities, and I think there's 10 of them in total, and we modified them, made them slightly bigger you know made the diameter slightly bigger and pushed them more towards nominal that defect rate tail that we saw earlier will very quickly get dealt with this tail here will very quickly get dealt with and of course what we're doing is we're taking this block of data here and we're shoving it to meet the rest of the data and probably creating something a lot more normal yeah, now that is the multivary chart. I've used a stock graph to create it. I had to organize the data correctly, and I had to organize it as maximum, minimum, and average, and then use the stock graph of standard Excel functionality. Now, this is a specialist analytical diagram. It's not a diagram you'd fill in day to day during production, but if you need to see patterns in the data, that's what these diagrams are doing. The run chart shows you time-based trend patterns. The histogram shows you the distribution of the data. You can see that in my case, my histogram is, is showing me that there's two separate processes going on. The CPK diagram is making a prediction of the defect rate. And finally, the multivary chart is cutting the data up in this case by cavity so that we can see more clearly what's going on and we can see 10 cavities need modifying and if we move those 10 cavities the likelihood is that we're going to get this process a lot more normal normality is going to be difficult to get simply because each cavity has its own normal distribution so unless we can get them all exactly sitting on the nominal you won't quite see normality. This this shape will always be a little bit scruffy in relation to the normal distribution, but that's what we're expecting. It's because effectively this isn't one process, it's 25 processes. And the, the multivary chart is showing you that pattern. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed, anything to do with Six Sigma or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.